welcome back to Faith Over Fear podcast. So today's episode is part two of testimonies, and Eileen is going is going to share her story with us. So take it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm so excited to be able to share my testimony. Um, I of course want to start from the very beginning. Um, whenever I obviously <laughs> was born, right? Um, I do want to emphasize that I wasn't born in the church. So my story is like a little bit different from like Crystal in that aspect. Um, I had my parents, uh, my mom, she was a believer of the Catholic church. And my dad, he just, he doesn't believe like in any church or like anything like that, right? So growing up, we didn't go to any church at all because whenever my parents moved to the United States, obviously like my mom just kind of like went with what my dad wanted. So that means no church on Sundays, nothing to do with mm. religion. So I didn't know anything. Like when it came, like my mom, she always like taught us that there's a God that we need to like thank him. You know, we, we can pray to him. And sometimes we'll do like a prayer night. But other than that, like there was just nothing to it. Like nothing. We would just go if there's like a quinceañera and you know how like yeah. you have to go to like their church. To um, Misa. To Misa and all that. So that was the only church that I had like growing up right um but I feel like I want to say this thing that my mom recently told me and she said that whenever I was about five or six years old I think she said that I was either like in first grade or kindergarten she can't remember really good but the thing is that whenever she would drop me off I would be like bye Dios te bendiga bye God bless you and my mom she was kind of like instead of saying like oh she was like okay okay god bless you because she was like where did she get that from like we never had said in our entire lives there's no like family member like nothing like we didn't have any family members that were like in a church or anything like that so she was like curious like where did she even learn this stuff from and i don't even think like maybe from school or something like that but she said that there was like an entire week that i would be like bye god bless you and so it's funny because my mom she was like am I gonna die and that is like I don't know why she was just thinking so much because she couldn't capture why would like a five six year old would be like by god bless you for like a despedida right it's not like normal and like kids you know and so that kind of like stuck to her um but like I said growing up it was just um you know doing my own thing I wouldn't think anything of it I wouldn't think like oh church and god was necessary to live i just lived my life and that's it um but i do want to emphasize that at the age of 12 it's whenever i started to hang around with my older brother he's four years older than me so he was so i was 12 so he was like what 16 at the time and it was during the era of like going clubbing of going like parties so i wanted to be with the older people you know with my brother and like his friends and stuff so i would go party with him i would go to like 15 I will go to like clubs and it will be weird because like what 12 year old goes to like clubs you know like it's crazy that I was even allowed to go in because I'm someone that's like very like short and like petite I guess you can say so it was very weird that like I was still allowed to go in into these places but I loved it like I feel like it was an escape for me to go to lead these parties because unfortunately growing up I didn't have the best support system with my father so we didn't have like this like connection or this bond and even my parents like at the time I wouldn't realize it but they always had like many problems there was always many like different so there was always like this hard tension at the house like it was never like this loving home there was no like oh like a family dinner or anything like that so for me partying was like my escape to feel good you know what I mean like I loved to dance back in the day like I loved being like you know on the dance floor being with friends and all that and hanging out with my brother but I like realized that every time I would go to the party I would feel so good there will be like this high but then you get home And you're like feeling empty again. Mm. So that's why like I would try to go party and like Friday, Saturday and even Sundays if I could and do it all over again every single weekend because I just really wanted that high again. Um, But the thing is that I feel like what kind of took a toll in all of us was whenever I uh, turned 13. I was in eighth grade and I met my friend. Um, And at the time, I didn't realize that she was, you know, her and her family were Christians. But there was this one time that I noticed something about her that in science class, they were talking about like who believes that the world was created by like the Big Bang Theory or Mm. like, you know, and all that. And she and then the teacher was like, or who believes that God created the world, you know, and she was literally the only 
person that said wow. God created the world. So that like, so if you think people don't notice, they notice because I noticed wow. at the time, but I was like, whoa, like, okay, like cool. Because I thought it was the big bang theory. You know <laughs> what I mean? So that's, I was like, okay, well that's really cool. But now I look back and it's crazy that I still have that memory. So that's yeah. why like, it's very important for us to like, know that even if people, you think people are not looking, trust me, they're looking right so, you know, we became really great friends, you know, hanging out with each other. And um, one day she invited me to a church service that it was called Dia del Amigo, Day of a F- the Friend, you know. And so she she was like, do you want to come? And I said, yeah, like, let's go. But the thing is that I was kind of like excited because for some reason, like, even though I didn't have any like church in my life, I guess you can say my mom, she always made it, like, put it in my mind that, like, whenever there's something wrong, you always have to go to God, and then also, like, with my dad, like, he was very, like, strict, but yet not strict when it came to, like, parties. It was just hard to, like, ask him for permission, and I feel like every person growing up can know that if you have strict parents or just asking them to go to, like, a party, it's already, like, stressful enough, so the thing is that whenever she invited me I was like perfect they can't say no because it's church like how are they gonna say no to church so I told my mom I was like yeah like she's inviting me to church like you know is that okay And she was like yeah like go ahead and that's what I loved about my mom that even though she was a believer in the catholic church she she never said no because we're catholics you know what I mean she was like yeah like as long as it's thing um it's like this or surrounding god then you know you're good so it was me and my brother we both went that day and I remember like my very first time going like you know you see the church and everything but they started you know the worship and I just loved the songs I was just there clapping along I was you know like I don't know I just really liked it for some reason like I just felt very connected and like the preaching and it was just so different and the one thing that really hit me was the altar call so whenever the pastor he asked people to come up to the altar to pray I saw families going up so I saw like man or like husband and wife their children going up and I was like what like men actually pray like is that actually like a thing because like I said like my dad was like zero religion zero church and like and also was someone that was like very his he wouldn't show his emotions so when I saw men like pouring out when I saw men like having their hands like lifted high I was like is this like a whole different universe like I was like this this is like not real. So I want to be a part of something that looks so beautiful to me. You know what I mean? So that was like my first personal connection with the church. I was just impressed. I thought this was like something different and I wanted to know more about this place. You know what I mean? So, um, the thing is that my mom, she wouldn't think anything of it, of telling my dad where I was going until she finally did. And he got upset. They started to argue. They started to say she can't go there. Like, she should be asking me permission to go to parties and not to a church. So it was just kind of like, we were kind of like, what is going on? Like, why is he getting mad? Like, over, he should be happy. Like, you know, like, you should be happy that I'm not trying to go to parties, that I'm trying to go to church. And so yeah you know like there was like arguments with my parents and my mom she'll be like you know just go go and I will handle your dad and so then I will go to church but I feel like there was already so much going on in my parents marriage that this was like the last straw for my mom Mm -hmm. where she was like how are you gonna hold her back to seeking God like you should be proud that she wants to do that like it's not normal in society for a young person in high school wanting to go to church so that's whenever you know things happen with my parents they got a divorce and um, we ended up going to a women's shelter for domestic violence and so we ended up moving to another city um because the city where my church is is in Pleasant Grove and then the shelter was in Garland so I couldn't go to church anymore but God like knew that I still needed him at that time and he brought over uh, volunteers that were Christian so it was the wife and the pastor they would come and pick up women that would like a bible study that would like to go to services and I told my mom like hey let's go like I miss going to church so like you know let's go and and like have like still be able to have that connection since we can't go to the church that I would go to And so, yeah, we did, you know, they started giving us Bible studies and all that. So that's how I was able to still like keep connected with my faith, even though it was like the whole situation of like my parents being divorced out of my house, a new environment and everything. 
because like the divorce like was tough in the sense for my little brother and also the sense of like a new environment it's it was really uncomfortable being in a shelter in mm. general and so that so like for me god was the person that like really like helped me out through that process and then also you're in high school i feel like yeah. that's like the most awkward stage that's a moments where you're like the most emotional as like a teenager mm-hmm. and all but I'm sorry but I forgot this part that I forgot to mention um during that time there was also another reason apart from seeing that it was something so beautiful of like you know church worship and all that um I had a boyfriend at the time and it's funny because we met on social media and I did not know that he was Christian like nothing like there was no signs that he even went to church and then whenever I go to church I'm like, wait, I know you. He was the piano player. <gasps> what a coincidence. Like, it's a, such a small world. Yeah. Such a small world. And I wait, was like, that was your boyfriend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, he was, he was my boyfriend. And so I was just like, okay, like, you know, you go to this church. Yeah. That's so cool. And uh, yeah, you know, so obviously, like, you know, I had three reasons. One, like, my boyfriend at the time was going to church. And then two, I wanted to hang out with my best friend. And it was better than being at home. Like, that was my escape to me. And then third, like, I genuinely liked it. I didn't understand it, but it, it was just a, like a pretty atmosphere, you know, like yeah. a whole different world to me. And so, yeah, but it was crazy because, like, I feel like the parents didn't like that we were, like, in a relationship because they were, like, really in the church and obviously it's understandable because I guess they wanted maybe like a Christian girlfriend for him and this and that but the thing is is that like you know if I'm being honest like there was no uh relationship you know what I mean like he was just he was also like a teenager because uh you know at the time I was 14 and he was 17 uh so there was like you know bit like I guess at the time whenever you you're a freshman you're dating like a senior that is kind of like an age gap you know what I mean but the thing is that um I feel like at the time whenever you're a teenager Uh, you feel that whoever is your boyfriend at the time is the person that you're going to marry that you're just like really like in love so for me it was kind of like an obstacle because I really liked this guy like I really wanted to like be with him and unfortunately instead of leading me to good he was leading me to bad so that's why like during my teenage years it was a hard thing to submit to God because I wanted to please him you know what I mean I wanted to still be with him so if there was a way for me to still have him you know talk to me to still have him to be with me then I need to do what he wants me to do you know what I mean and so that's why like even though I was going to church I felt like I was kind of living like a double life with him because I wanted you know we wanted to do things of the world but at the same time like my friend she kept on it she kept on taking me and at the time I thought it was okay like I didn't feel any remorse I didn't feel any guilt because I was like as long as I'm going to church that's enough that was my mindset like as long as I go to church that should be enough and even though I'm living like this double life you know with him then that should be okay you know because you know like at the time you don't really think nothing of it you were like new coming in and he was like the piano player so you're like it's fine you know yeah like there was no you didn't know better yeah and so um and so, yeah, but the thing is that we only lasted, f- like, as a official boyfriend and girlfriend for, like, eight months. But I have to admit, it was the most toxic relationship ever at the mm-hmm. time. It was very, like, yeah, like I said, like, very toxic, very bad. We were so, like, mean to each other. Um, There was, like, moments where, like, it was just, like, very, like, just very destroying to each other you know what I mean and so that's why it was very confusing because it's like how is someone that's in the church treating me like this you know what I mean so I thought that being like I thought that's what Christianity was like you know they're not true people they're just like you know like that's why like like a front yeah like a front so he was like my representation of the church but I'm so happy that even though we went through what we went through and even though he left me in pain and in hurt I still didn't leave the church yeah you know what I mean and I have to thank obviously my friend and my family because they were like they kind of like adopted me like the dad would always say like oh yeah she's my daughter when he would introduce me to other people Mm -hmm. so it felt like I was a part of a family like you know there were my friend and her siblings they were like my brother and sister Mm -hmm. it was just and then like her mom like wow she was like such a a perfect well like obviously nobody's perfect but she was such a good 
figure for someone that had a relationship with God because during that time she was going through cancer whenever I met her it was during breast cancer but she got healed Mm -hmm. but then as we continue on um she the cancer came back and she had it all over her body you know it was like bones and then there was a tumor and it was all that but the thing is that I always saw her praising I always saw her pouring out to God and that always like stuck to me and I remember one time um I told my mom that I was going to go to church but in reality I did go to church but it was with another guy like mm-hmm. his church, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I made her think that I was going to go with them. And so um, since my mom was friends with my friend mom, um, with the sister, they were talking and then she was like, oh, like, you know, how did it go with Aileen? Because she went with you guys. And so my th- the sister was like, oh, what are you talking about? She didn't come with us. And oh, she was no. like, what? Like, she said that she was going to church with you guys. I can't believe it. She lied to me. But my mom didn't think much of it. She was just going to be like, oh, she's going to see whenever she gets home. You yeah. know what I mean? But then, like, I don't know where she turns over to the sister and she was crying. And so my mom, she was like, is everything OK? And yeah. she was like, no, it's because like Aileen, she was doing so good. Like, I, this is not her. Like, you know, um, I'm going to keep her in my prayers. Like she was just like crying for me. And whenever my mom told me that, because at the time my mom, she just got mad at me. She was like, you see what you caused? You caused her to cry and this is and that. And now, you know, but that kind of stuck to me. And I was like, why, why would she cry? Why is she so upset of, you know, a a lie that I told or, you know, whatever it is? Like, why does she care? You know what I mean? But now I understand that she cared for my spirit because she saw that I was doing good. She saw. And so, you know, these little things can distract you. Like these little things can take you astray from like where you're headed Mm to. So I'm very grateful to her. And she's actually someone that also guided my mom at the time. But unfortunately, she passed away. Um, So it was a very hard time for my friend and her family. And I tried to be there as best as I could. But we were Mm -hmm. teenagers. And I'm someone that like is an introvert. So sometimes I don't know how to handle situations. But I tried like the best that I could. I tried, you know, being there for her as best as I could. Right. Um, But the thing is that this was during the time whenever we were probably sophomores in high school. Um, So then, yeah, you know, um, time passed and you know um they were very involved in the church so for me they were my spiritual guides there were people that I looked up to and like were my example of how to be like a Christian and how to get involved in the church they would take me to Bible studies and all that but the thing is that one thing that I kind of struggled with is that whenever I went into the church I had all red hair full-blown makeup jewelry um I didn't care what length my skirt was like I just went based on how I like to dress at that time Mm -hmm. you know what I mean and so there was like certain looks of like oh you know what is she doing here but what I loved about my friend and her family they did not care they're like they didn't even tell me hey you shouldn't wear that they never told me what to wear not to wear they just accepted the fact that she's here you know she's at church so that's why like it was so you know beautiful and a privilege the people that brought me into the church because they made me feel accepted the way that I looked they made me feel accepted that I'm not perfect and they made me feel accepted that like you know you're not supposed to be perfect to be in the church even though I used to think that back then like being Christian was like looking a certain way talking a certain way and now I realize that's not like the case right so um fast forward to us I guess you can say like during like the 14 and whenever I was 17 in high school I would just go to church but I would still be doing my thing I didn't think much of it like you said like in your pre- in the previous video or the episode how you mentioned that you would just go as a routine but you will leave God there and that was exactly me like I only prayed at church I only worshiped worshiped him at church and yet I still you know lived my own life I still you know dated made a lot of mistakes in that aspect I would go to parties but then like slowly but surely um going back to the party aspect even though I was going like parties and clubbing as I was getting a little bit more closer to God every time I went to a party it just felt less and less and less satisfying like it was just not giving me the high that I needed it was just not you know it was just like as I would go I would be like like I don't want to be here I don't want to do this you know so then I stopped you know I stopped going to parties and so this was I think I want to say I think I stopped whenever I was like 16 or 17 so like just as early as I started as early like I left all that right Mm -hmm. um so then I want to say whenever I was 17 I graduated from high school and um 
like I said, like, again, I want to say whenever I turned 18, it was the point where I made many mistakes when it comes to dating. Mm. So even though I was very trapped with the first boyfriend that I had because I was still, like, in love with him um, for so many years, like, I just really wanted to be with this person. I didn't see myself with, like, no one else until finally, like, I turned 18. And whenever you get a job, you know, you see more people and stuff like that. And that's whenever I had my first crush apart from this guy. And, yeah, like, it was just, um, again, he was way older than me. So I guess a side note, I only liked older guys. Mm -hmm. I would not date anybody that they were my age or younger. Like for me, if they were the older, the better. Um, And I want to blame it. I guess you can say, you know how the world calls it like daddy issues. Yeah. Because I didn't have my dad present. Um, I wanted to get validation from men. You know, I wanted to feel beautiful. I wanted the attention. I wanted them to be with me and to love me or to like me, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's why I wanted someone that was older. You know what I mean? Because like if like I said like if they were young like no I'm not interested and I just really wanted like an older guy and so yeah you know like I said I started talking to this person and again it was just like very bad like leading me um into situations that I shouldn't have been leading me to places that I shouldn't have been um conversations that were not good especially for a mindset of an 18 year old it was just um not a good space but because I really wanted to have him I was okay with crossing boundaries Mm -hmm. and even though I didn't want to I was like okay I mean if this is the only way that guys would want to be with me then unfortunately this is the only way you know but because I was still going to church I feel like that's why I couldn't like give in and I couldn't enjoy it because I feel like that's like God was like hey this isn't you hey, you don't need this, the conviction. So that's why I even said, I was like, because I would have my friends and everybody everybody would be like, yeah, like, this is good, this is fun, like, this was normal to them. And I'm like, why don't I enjoy it? You know what I mean? Like, I was just thinking, why can't I enjoy it? But I just couldn't, and I just did it, just like I said, because I wanted to still have that person. And so, um, but luckily, God took me out of that situation. But then again, I needed another lesson. So then it was like, again, after another, after another, and after another. And it is like a little bit like shy, because, you know, it is shy to be like, oh, you know, she dated, uh, you know, around or she was with a lot of guys. But just keep in mind, like my mindset was like, this is what satisfied me at the time, because I didn't let God in all the aspects. So because he I only let him in with what I wanted to let him in. That's why I, that's why like my cup was still empty. You know what I mean? So if I had let him in there, those things wouldn't, you know, have the opportunity to come in. So that's why like, I still made like mistake after mistake because I'm also someone that's very like emotional. Like if I like you, like I like you, you know what I mean? And I gave myself like all in to the relationship. Um, But yeah, like there was even certain a time where I was 18 and I dated someone that was, 30 well yeah (laughs) so it's like I said it's a little bit embarrassing but I was just not guided like I did not know what was right what was wrong and you may think like oh what about your parents like keep in mind that my parents also didn't have any convictions you know they thought that it was normal you know there was just like nobody was like guiding me and so yeah um that happened and you know as life continued on, I started to notice that my friend that brought me in started to distance herself from the church. It first started with her siblings that they started to distance themselves out to the point that they didn't go anymore. And then she started um, going to university and then she worked when with the same job as me and so she was starting to become distant and then keep in mind that I only went if she went and also like if she went to the altar then I would go to the altar so I was very dependent on my friend Mm. and like her family to know how to like move inside the church because I was very shy like I was still very like timid and all that so whenever I saw her like you know, going away, it was a little bit awkward of like going to church by myself. Like nobody would go with me, not my parents, my siblings, like no one would go. So I would feel like a little like, you know, awkward just going by myself, but I just really wanted to go. And so there was a point where she just completely stopped going to church. Like every single person stopped going to church. And that really affected me because I'm like, 
you know, I started this walk with her and it's very sad that I'm not, con- I'm not continuing it. You know what I mean? And so I feel like God gave me an option. He was like, should I leave the church because they left or should I continue on even though I'm going to be by myself? And so I took the decision. I was like, you know what? I'm going to continue on because I feel like I need God. Like I feel like there's something that there's more. I want to know what's more out there. You know, why are people praising this God? What, who is he, you know? And so I was like, okay, I'm going to continue on. Even if it means that I'm going to be by myself, then, you know, so be it. But one moment that I don't know if I wanted to say, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, whenever it was like the breakup phase of the very first boyfriend, the one that was the piano player, I was just like so heartbroken. Like I thought I could not live without this person. I was just so dependent. And so there was this one time that I was like in the restroom floor, like I was pouring out to God. I was like, God, I can't take it anymore. I'm so, like, I have this huge pain in my chest and I need your help. And just like crying like hard. And I was even thinking, I was like, I shouldn't even be here. Just like those suicidal thoughts. Yeah. And it's funny because like, at the t- now I'm like oh you know that's teenage me like teenagers like we yeah. can be a little dramatic but I'm not saying that like oh you're dramatic if you have those feelings but what I'm trying to say based like on my lifestyle like now when you're on the other side but at the time that's how I felt like I felt yeah. like I couldn't live without this person so out of nowhere I just feel two hands like right here and they started to like pick me up. And so whenever I finally got into my feet, the tears were gone. I was not sad anymore. And from that day on, I was already able to live my life without this person. And so I was just like so powerful. I was like, what a privilege to have that opportunity to feel him yeah. like in the physical forms. Like it was two hands that hold on to me here and just like rose me up and there was no more tears, no more sadness. And so that's why, like, I feel that because I he knew that I was going to have that decision if I should stay or leave. He demonstrated who he was and he was like. And I guess it was kind of like, I want to know more of him. I want to know what's more of the experience that I just felt. So there was just like so many things in my life that made the decision easy for me to be like, you know what? I'm going to stay because I just really love going here. Um, And so then fast forward to, I want to say 19 and kind of like the end of 19. um, Unfortunately, my church was going through a hard time where like members were leaving and I just didn't like what I was seeing. But then God convicted me and he was like, if you want to see a change in your church, you have to be the change. Wow. You can't expect things to change if you're just sitting there. And because at first I would be like, why is nobody doing anything about it? Like, why isn't the adults doing anything? The pastor doing anything? And that's whenever God told me, he was like, no, because you need to do something about it. And so I was like okay yeah you're right because I would love to do this I would love to do that and so I talked to the youth pastors at the time and I told them because keep in mind I didn't have any relationship with no other member besides the family that brought me in I did not speak to anybody else I did not speak to any youth so I was literally sitting in La Banca for by myself for maybe or I guess banca means um, the bench, the the chairs, (laughs) Uh, by myself for about a good year. So whenever God told me that I have to be the change, I was like, how can I do it if I don't I don't talk to these people? You know what I mean? And so that's whenever he rose me up of, you know, getting involved in Bible studies, um, talking to my youth pastors, you know, talking to the youth that was there at the time. And so, yeah, I did that. I started going to the Bible studies and whenever elections come around. So elections means that each uh, in our church, each department, like women, youth and men have like their presidents and the vice presidents just to kind of keep an organization or um yeah for each department so people can have like guidance on like yes. age groups yes and so um i don't know why but i asked i was like i would really love to help out and i see that you guys are looking for a youth president and i yeah. told them i was like i know this is so bold of me but i have all these ideas and i just have this desire in me to ask if i can help out in being youth president and so they were like oh like yeah you know let me talk to the pastor and this and that and so they did and so pastor called me over to his office and he was like i heard that you want to you know help out and being youth president and i was like yes because i didn't know him i didn't speak to him so i was a little timid 
I was like shy yeah. and like nervous to like, you know, talk to him. And he was like, okay, like we're going to give you the opportunity. I think it's really nice that you want to get involved, that you want to get help yeah. out and we're here to support you. And so from there, just God took control. That's God awesome. took over my life completely. Um, so I became youth president. I started to form a bond with the youth. I started to kind of get myself more involved. I started getting guidance from the youth pastors to see what it is to be a youth president because I was like very fresh. Like I was, I did not knew anything of what it meant to serve, what it meant to like be there for others or anything like that. So for me to have that opportunity as someone that was like so fresh, um, it was such like a huge blessing, even though I've been in the church for, I want to say at the time it was six years and now I have five years of serving um it was such a privilege for them to give me the opportunity but the thing is that I still had one small issue and the small issue was that I needed to give God the area of relationships you know Mm -hmm. what I mean I was like okay if I'm already in this ministry I can't be committing the same mistakes I can't let guys that are not supposed to be in my life and let them in right so I started fasting because it was something that I wanted to go all in just like I wanted to become youth president and meant that if I was going to give the example it's because I'm living that example yes so I started it's really important because you can't ask people to do something if you're not even doing it yourself Mm -hmm. so I started reading my bible I started to fast I started to listen to like preachings um just like all in right so I decided to fast and one I don't know what came up that I don't know if you guys remember this phrase relationship goals like all oh, their relationship goals yeah. you know like your favorite celebrities and this and that so I started searching up something and then it said in the search bar relationship goals and I was like mm, let me click on it. it's just something made me click on it so I yeah. clicked on it and it took me to this uh church called transformation church so maybe you guys have heard of it maybe you guys haven't but it's uh their lead pastor is pastor Mike and so I was like, he did an eight um, video series um, over relationships. So it was like, you know, before the person, when does it need to end? Guidance of people that are engaged, single, divorced, married. Um, they did a marriage episode as well. They did um, just like very like in detail stages of people when it comes to relationships. Right. Yeah. So those eight episodes convicted me it transformed me it made me into a new creation because God finally like revealed to me what it meant to be to have a Christ-centered relationship and I was and I praised him and to this day I've been single for six years now Wow. Uh, my last relationship was uh, six years ago whenever I was 20 and it was just a bad relationship, not because he was toxic, but because he wasn't Christian or not Christian, but didn't have a relationship with God. So he was not even he was like his religion was Muslim, mm-hmm. but he was not even in his own religion. So obviously he didn't even want to be like in mine. So I would push him. I'll be like, come on, let's go to church. Let's go to Bible study. Yeah. And it would make me sad that he didn't want to do it. So the reason why we broke up is because he moved to different states. But I also wanted to break up with him beforehand. But I was like, oh, I would just wait until he moves. Right. Yeah. And so that's why, like, I was curious about seeing those videos about relationship goals because I just had went through a breakup so seeing those videos made me realize that it's not only important to know what you want in a relationship it's also important to know what you don't want in a relationship Mm. and so I was like I don't want someone that is going to um, take me away from God I want someone that's gonna like push me more into God and so those videos just was an eye-opener I was able to like now I finally gave every aspect to God and I praise him. I'm so happy because now the way that I see a relationship is that I need to work on myself in my single season because whatever you have in your single season is what you're going to bring in into your relationship. Yes, that's good. So I had to make sure that I loved God. I loved myself and then I'm going to be able to love the person that God has for me. And I have to make sure vice versa, that he's also the same way that he loves God. He loves himself and then he's going to be able to love me, you know. And so, yeah, you know, I finally was a was convicted. I um, had it in my mind that I wanted someone that was in the same mindset as me, in the same um, conviction as me, that had a relationship with God. But I know that God has his process. Of course, um, there's moments between 
between the six years that you know I was tempted like oh this guy is cute or maybe like I had a crush on someone but God never allowed it to happen because he knew he's like no this person isn't for you Mm -hmm. and at the time like obviously it kind of hurts but it's such a privilege because that's God's way of showing me how he's a father to me because I ask him permission I'm like hey like you know, God, is this person the person that I can talk to because I have a crush on him or I feel like he's cute, whatever my mindset is, yeah. right? I w- and I ask permission and God answers. If you want guidance um, in any aspect in your life, God answers and he's going to either take the person away or he's going to take you out of that situation or that place. So yeah, that's how I'm a- I've been able to keep my singleness. I love how you put it, like, because your your relationship with God is so personal and intimate and like sometimes people don't know that you can talk to God like that you mm-hmm. know yeah and I love that you have that like example yeah exactly because awesome. since I don't have my earthly father God is every single aspect as a fatherhood so yeah. if you know how like um in the world like oh you ask permission to your dad like hey I'm dating this guy like what do you think or am I able to go on a date with him I do that to God yeah. And so I asked him, like, hey, God, like, can we date? Like, is there a way for us to get to know each other? And he says, no. You know, he has said no, um, obviously, to this day because I'm still single. <laughs> and that's okay because yeah. I feel like the guy that he has for me, he's still preparing him. Uh, because, I, you know, I've told Chris this. He's in construction. <laughs> he's in construction right now. <laughs> and I feel like one thing that really helped me out um, was that my pastor, he gave a prophecy over my life when it comes to that aspect. So I know where God is taking me with him. And after he gave me that prophecy of who the person is, now I'm able to be like, nope, it's not you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I now the standards are like up here of who he is. So if he doesn't meet those standards, not because I'm perfect or whatever, but what I'm trying to say is that like, there is a certain thing that he has to have. And if I don't accept that, then I'm just lowering my value. What's awesome is that like the fact that you, you struggled with this, you know, and you gave it to God and God loves you so much that he was like, this is going to be your man. Do you know? Like, so you don't have to sit here and worry about it. Like you're going to know that's awesome that just shows how much he loves us you know yeah so true he's taking care of you (laughs) he really is and i feel very well taken care of because now i know that like if someone tries to get close to me i'm like no it's not you because god already told me like this is the person for you so like you said like i'm well taken care of so that's how i've been able to like you know keep my calm keep my peace and right now like this year of 2024 because like obviously like even though you know like I said there's still temptations there's still moments where like maybe it could be him like you lower your standards to fit that person in and I did that last year so um this year I told myself I'm not gonna lower my standards because I God has shown me and has told me my value and then second I feel like I still have so much to do for the Lord. And I heard this podcast. I said, if you don't do this in the time that you're single, you're not going to have the, you're not going to do it whenever you're married because it's a different season. Yeah. So and that's, that's so true because like the single time is the time you have with God. Cause once you're married, like you're, you have to take care of your husband, exactly. you know? So we have to take advantage of this single season because this is where we can connect with god the most like Mm -hmm. this is where we're building our foundation so when we have like not distractions you know but like a family like we have that firm foundation with god like since now you know exactly that's awesome exactly so that's why um um it's like a privilege because now this year i have so much peace with my singleness like i'm not interested in anybody i am just focusing on god i am just that peace that if he wants me because at first i'm like maybe this year i might meet him you know but now i'm like if i don't meet him i'm 100 percent okay you know yeah. because i know that god has him working just like you said he's under construction and also just like i have high standards i'm sure he has high standards that i also want to meet as a wife yes you know what i mean so i'm working on myself to be the person he wants me to be and he's working on himself so he can be the person that i need as a husband so he can yeah. lead me and also keep in mind like the guy that i date is going to be the first time that i'm gonna have like a genuine 
God-centered relationship. So wow. I need to make sure that he's very in the word because he's going to be the person that's going to lead me. Yeah, You know what I mean? So and that's so important. Like it, it literally says in the Bible to be equally yoked, exactly. you know, like we cannot be just getting anybody. Exactly. <laughs> So that's why, like, um, now instead of feeling like, oh, when is he coming now? I'm at peace because I'm like, okay, so he's, you know, God is working in him. So now let me focus my attention to you, God, and not be distracted of when is he coming or when we go to, like, different events or different churches. Like, is he here, you know? So now that's, like, out of my mind, you know, so that's why I'm very happy. But that's why I really wanted to emphasize that because relationships and guys was the center i was like boy crazy so that's why i really wanted to emphasize that whenever you give that aspect to god like your single season is so beautiful your single season is just the most important thing because that's like i say that's what you're going to bring into your relationship so like if you feel that you need validation if you feel that this person you can't do better than this person like you're wrong like God is the person that can show you your value, that can give you the love that you actually need without having to sacrifice um, your, how can you say, like without having to sacrifice um, needing to, because like if a guy is requiring certain things from you, that's how you know it's not the person. Yeah. Because it, the a relationship shouldn't be based on confusion, shouldn't be based on you having to sacrifice something that doesn't make you feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, because there's also another thing that I keep to my mind. Like if I'm, if I have to ask if this person likes me, then that means he doesn't. Yeah. Because God is not a God of confusion. Mm-hmm. He's going to pursue you. Like the guy's going to pursue you. You don't have to chase anybody because I used to chase guys. We are the rib. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they're gonna find us exactly and back then no like if i like someone i would be the one going up to them i'll be the one like pursuing the guy and now because i used to thought like oh you know we're like at the time like it's 2019 the girl can pursue the guy you know like there's nothing and now i'm just kind of like no like i am someone that's worth them pursuing me i shouldn't yeah. lower myself to go yeah. after a guy you know but yeah so that's why like i encourage um every single person guy or girl like give that aspect to god and you're gonna see that he's just gonna fill you with peace he's going to fill you with so much um secure like in you like your insecurities are just going to like go away it's not gonna be something like from day and night there's also going to be like obviously like moments like I said that you want to give in or you want to let that person in but trust me like for someone that's been single for all that time it's such a beautiful thing you don't have to rush into anything or if you get out of a long-term relationship or a short-term relationship don't jump into another relationship you know what I mean give yourself some time to heal give yourself some time for God to work in you um and you're gonna see that it's such a beautiful thing in that aspect um but now um Like I said, I've been serving, you know, in my church for five years as a youth president. Now I have the position as um, director of evangelizing. I get to usher. I get to help out in the media, in the sound. I'm also the translator at my church. So um, because my church is a very small church, so there is like a lot of positions to be able to help on. But it's such a privilege. It's such a privilege being able to help out every single aspect at my church. I've also had the privilege of being able to revamp of the decor of my church so that's been a very cool process as well. Um, my pastor, he's like a spiritual father to me, has been guiding me, has been patient with me. Because also another thing that um, I wanted to say just a bit about is that I used to think that in order for you to be a Christian, you had to look a certain way. I wear makeup. I love, you know, fashion. I love to express myself through my clothes because I'm a very shy person. So I like to kind of show my personality based on like my clothing. Um, so um you know being in the apostolic church which is something that we're going to talk on in the next video um you know there's like certain you know traditions or doctrines that we have you know things that are based in the bible but my pastor and my church well you know some members they have been so patient with me they have been so accepting that the way that you look doesn't determine how your relationship with god is there's God wants to work in you before he works in the outside. And like, of course, there is moments and there is convictions of like, oh, I should do this. Like modesty. I loved modesty since I was a little girl. Like I loved wearing my long skirts. But the reason why I stopped being modest was because going to a club, it was, you know, you had to wear your your, your crop top or your mini skirt. Uh, So I only went based on like what society wanted of me. 
but slowly but surely god has been taking away not because we have to look a certain way but because he's showing the beauty in me you know what i mean i was so dependent on makeup to feel beautiful and now i realize like i don't need this to be beautiful like i think wearing makeup it's a good thing if you're just using it to like maybe amplify something you know you want maybe your eyelashes your your eyebrows a little bit more combed but it shouldn't be something for you to hide underneath with and i did that for so many years i hid underneath the makeup i hid underneath you know the clothing and all that because you know going back to my first ex he told me he was like that's why you need makeup to cover how ugly you are Uh -uh. he told me that so imagine telling that to a teenage girl from someone that you know you loved from someone that you wanted to feel pretty to so that's why i held on to makeup because i was like he's right like an only guy a guy would only like me if i put on makeup if i have you know my hair done if i had this certain type of clothes so now i finally made peace with the thought that i don't need makeup that i am beautiful without it if i use it now it's because i've been you know using it for so long that obviously like a transition is not going to be like a uh, from day to night it's going to take some time it's a process it's a it's a process but you know just keep in mind that you don't need to look a certain way because jesus he just wants friends there is no dress code there's no this there's only convictions and personal ways of one wanting to look like how you want to look like so if i want to wear my long skirt if i want to look a certain way it's because god is putting that in me not because men is doing it you know and it's it's beautiful because like when you come to god you come i feel like a lot of people find god when they're like rock bottom you Mm -hmm. know they're in a low place Mm -hmm. and i feel like once you start this process with god like he starts working in you and like he works inside like he sees us on the inside you know so he's working on the inside and eventually like what you have on the inside starts to reflect on the outside and i feel like a lot of the times we just see the outside and Mm -hmm. we judge you know exactly but what's important is on the inside and eventually through a process like the inside starts reflecting on the outside exactly and that's beautiful you know but everybody is in their own process Mm -hmm. and i feel like we need to be more understanding of that you know and i'm i was gonna say like i'm so happy that the people that brought you into church were understanding and that your pastor was understanding because i know that a lot of people can get hurt Mm -hmm. like from the church and that is that is a very serious topic that we would probably cover too you know yes but just it's amazing that God gave like you the right family to bring you in Mm -hmm. and the support you got, you know, and now like we can see you and like God has been working, you know, and that's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Amen. It's so true. It's such it's such a privilege. It's honestly such a privilege being able to um, have that relationship with God. And um, since I am first generation, you know, I'm still fighting for my family. Praise God that my mom, you know, she's already baptized. She's been baptized for three years now. So it's like very, you know, kind of confusing in a way, because like instead of the parents pushing me i'm the one pushing my parents and it can be like a little bit conflicting because you want to say something but you don't want to cross the boundary that you know she's still your mom or she's still your dad you know um so but like i said now it's me and my mom we're fighting for my dad we're fighting for my brothers and for the rest of my family so it's such a privilege that you know slowly but surely god is like working and also like it's really cool to be first generation because i didn't depend on my family or my parents um I didn't depend on them taking me to the church. I didn't depend on their faith. I had to create my own faith. And that's beautiful. Because salvation is individual. So you have to create your yeah. own faith. You have to create your own convictions. I had to teach myself right and wrong. I had to teach myself what it is to be modest, what it is to love yourself, what it is to say no to guys, what it is because I had zero guidance. That's so important though. Like I feel like like me, you know, like I had all these things growing up but I didn't have a relationship with God until like I went through everything you know and it's crazy because there's still people in the church to this day that still don't know God you Mm -hmm. know but God gave you the privilege of finding him you Mm -hmm. know and knowing him and that's beautiful because like it takes some of us longer than it should you know like I'm speaking for myself (laughs) 
<laughs> but that's beautiful. It, it's really beautiful and it's such a privilege. It is hard. Don't get me wrong, because yeah. of course, how I wish like, you know, to have that guidance from my dad. Like I love him and I respect him. Like he is my everything. You know, my family is my everything. But I also have to sh- understand that everybody has a process. And if I'm able to help out, like, hey, I'm going to be I want to be God's hands and feet, you know, for my family to be able to come. And like I said, my mom is already on this journey with me and we're both fighting, you know, for my family and all. But yeah, you know, so it is such a privilege of being able to um, be able to discover this journey on my own and be able to be helped on. And like I said, now I have my pastor that it's like helping me out and, you know, um, guiding me and I'm able to um, serve in my church. And, you know, like it's crazy to think that the person because like now whenever I do things for my church, I'm like, wow, like the world takes a 360. At first I was like the visitor, the one that was shy, the one that was like people didn't like to be around with. And now I get to serve the church. Now I get to like have a relationship, you know, with my pastor and just and kind of go like from there. It's it's beautiful because you get to show the love that you didn't get, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, you know, mm-hmm. so because God is love, you know, and I wanted to go back to the relationship thing you were talking about, because like God is love, you know. So how do you expect someone who doesn't know God to love you if they don't even know what love is, you know? Exactly. And that's like like if you don't have the love of the father, then like you don't know what love is. Exactly. And that's so deep, you know. And um, I also wanted to add something with that. I remember that I told one of my friends because like you know, the order should be that the men or us, we need to love God and then we need to love ourselves and then we need to, we're able to love, you know, our person. But many people nowadays are like, no, like, um, they should love me first. How are they, you know, it should be me and them themselves. And I'm like, no, because if they love themselves, they're going to be the best version for you. And they're secure. And they're secure. Exactly. Because you want someone that's secure in themselves. So that someone that like, can like lead you someone that, you know, doesn't have to depend on no one, but God, you know, and submissive to God, because you have to push the person Mm -hmm. as a woman, like, I don't think that's how that's it should work. Yeah, and it becomes like a burden in a way. Yeah, you know, you're like exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I wanted to say, I love how since the very beginning, like God chose you. It's crazy. Like it's like so the crazy. Dios te bendiga when yeah. you're like in kindergarten. Like yes. that's beautiful. Like yeah. God already knew, you know. Yeah. And, and he, sorry, <laughs> the fact that like your mom's saved now. Yes. like that's amazing i know it's and god is still working like god is still working um uh, because just like i said like my mom she's someone that like was very like into her beliefs of like the catholic church but even she said it like um going whenever she went inside the, uh our church she was like it's different there it's more intimate you know yeah. there's a more personal connection and so and then going back about like since I was little um I you know I wish there was enough time for me to tell you my birth story like mm-hmm. it was very like dramatic like I almost died twice <gasps> there was just so much maybe in time you I would know, say you know there's a saying that like if you're gonna ha- do big things like the devil's gonna try to get rid of you from the yeah, beginning from the very beginning Bruh. and so <laughs> and then also there was this other thing that we're gonna you know just like you said we're gonna talk over modesty what it is and yeah. just all that right but I remember um that I would whenever I was little my mom wanted to put me like in little banditas or like little skirts and like you know when you go to the beach like a like a little bikini for girls and stuff mm-hmm. like that I did not like it at all like I would try to like pull it down I would try to pull down my skirt like I just hate like growing up I hate it you know little skirts and I remember that I would cry to my mom I was like I want to wear a long skirt to my ankle wow. and she's like why like why do you want to do that I was like because I feel beautiful with my long skirt until the day that my dad was like just let her buy whatever she wants and you will see me with my long skirt so that's why for me modesty is not a hard thing because I loved it since I was a child yeah. isn't that weird that like a little girl once her long skirt and i loved my long sleeve yeah. and i hate showing anything when it came to like cleavage and all that yeah. and so and that's something that we're going to talk about next uh video about you know apostolic and all that because i there were so many moments that i wanted to leave the church yeah. um the apostolic church because there's other dominations right where like you can wear pants and, and you can do whatever you want to do mm-hmm. and that's fine you know there's m- my respects to that but god told me i want you in an apostolic church yeah and so i was like okay you know I will go ahead and do that and I feel like it's just kind of like giving a voice that if you um if you feel a connection then just 
you know, stay there. You know, you shouldn't yeah. feel in a con- you shouldn't feel connection with people. Feel connection with God, yeah. and that's what I chose. I was like, if I move to church, it will be a connection with people and not with God. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why I've, it's been a privilege to and be what it's com- about, like, and that's what it's about. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but that's a little bit of my story. Like I said, there's so much, but we will be here for like two hours <laughs> if I say more. But you know, just keep at it. Like if it's just you and your family, keep on fighting. You're gonna see the your reward. You're going to you're going to see your fruits. It's such a privilege being able to be a first generation for my family, and um, let yourself be used by God. Let God enter in every single aspect in your life, and you're gonna see that God is gonna guide you as a father, as a friend, as a mother. Whatever you need. God is that for you and that's what he is for me so that's my story and um, if anybody has any more further questions if anybody wants to reach out I am here to help out I am here to pray for you guys and yeah that's awesome that's so powerful I loved hearing it um this is the end of the episode so subscribe to our youtube channel and follow us on our social medias and we'll see you next time bye guys bye guys